Before we get to the movie, I have a question from a viewer here, Steve Thorne. I believe I heard Matt say once that he can't watch MST3K or Rift Tracks versions of films. Is that true? If so, why is that? Why is that, Matt? It's because that's my, my job, too. <laughs> I've been listening to these guys riff my entire adult life. I'm trying to get them out of my head so I don't consciously or unconsciously copy them. I'd say that they taught us how to riff on movies. But we really need to access our own voice when we're doing what yeah. we do on the old leather couch. I saw a clip from a riff tracks. Kevin Murphy says, I think this movie failed the touring test. <laughs> That's a line that I could have conceivably arrived at on my own, but now I can't. Oh. And if I ever think of mentioning the Turing test on the couch, mm -hmm. I'll think of that comment, and yeah. I'll feel like I'm copying. So I can no longer watch riffs because I live them. You've nearly convinced me, but I know you're a robot. Turing test! I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. I loved this album when I was young. It was my second CD. I'm happy to tell you that this month has a theme. Ooh, it's been a long time. This year, the merry month of May, will be the merry month of musicals. Oh! The Chrysler Building, Times Square, Grand Central, the Port Authority. You can visit all these places and more when you go to... da 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 42nd Street. Oh! And that's an oldie. Will it be a goodie? Released in 1933, 42nd Street stars Basement alums Warner Baxter, Dick Powell, and Ginger Rogers. Warner Baxter, who's Warner Baxter? How could you forget The Prisoner of Shark Island? Directed by Lloyd Bacon, with choreography by Busby Berkeley, the musical was based on the novel of the same name by Bradford Ropes. Little known Hollywood fact. No, The Ropes was actually a reference to Bradford Ropes. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. If you knew the ropes, you were in. This film did so well at the box office that it saved Warner Brothers from bankruptcy. Without this, there'd be no Bugs Bunny. And throughout that year, the studio continued to rake in the cash with two more musical follow-ups, Gold Diggers of 1933 and Footlight Parade. So you've never seen this one? No, I haven't. I saw the play. Music. Not only does it allow us to express our inner turmoil and joy, it can also be fun. So this gift is a way that you can have fun with music. Oh man, it's something called mixtape. It's a game. What song plays every morning as you are in your morning rush to make breakfast? I can easily answer this question. Three songs from Moana and <laughs> three songs from Frozen. This is in your head or this is actually playing? Oh, this is actually playing. Oh, okay. And if it's not playing, it's in my head. Okay. It's all I listen to now, man. Remember the Pixies? They used to be big in my life. Now I got Raffi. Well, hop on the subway and get off at the stop that leads to the old leather couch where we're going to enjoy 42nd Street. Ba 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 Forty Second Street and Eighth Avenue. That's where all the whores are. Jones and Barry are doing a show. 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 I like Jones. I can't stand Barry. So Jones and Barry are doing a show. Who's throwing money at the show? His name is Abner Dillon. They want a big star like Dorothy Booth. Dorothy Brock. That's better. He's gotten Dorothy Brock, famous actress, to play the lead. And he's also canoodling with her on the side. Directing this thing is Julian Marsh. And he's desperate. He needs a successful show. Your reputation. Uh, did you ever try to cash your reputation at a bank? I cashed my reputation at a bank once. Yeah. I went up to that teller and I said, Have you heard of a little thing called Chad Vader? <laughs> she started handing out the cash. $14. That's right. <laughs> and man, his health isn't going to hold out. What is it, Doc? Cancer? Oh. <laughs> Let me light another cigarette. He had a nervous breakdown, don't you know? You are not just headed for another nervous breakdown. You're also cruising for a bruising. He's unstable, but you can rely on him. Unless he's too unstable. I've given everything I've had to that cult star, and it's taken all I had to offer. You hear what I'm saying, Mr. Window? You're the only one I can confide in. There's a huge cattle call for the audition. Uh, but are you by any chance the... What is the word? The Italian. <laughs> Anytime Annie, they call her. Gee, you been abroad? Sure, she's abroad. She's broad where abroad should be broad. Peggy Sawyer walks in. It's her first audition. Everyone can see that she's just a rube from the sticks. 
and she walks in on Billy Lawler in a state of undress. Come right in, miss. We can talk. Don't worry. It's a theater. We're naked around each other all the time. This is actually true about the theater. You become cool with people seeing you in your underwear. It's your duty show business, aren't you? I have a special couch I'd like to show you. <laughs> he takes a shine to her right away. This will be my first if they take me. If they take you? Hey, you can't miss. I have nothing to base this off of, and you seem particularly mousy. You'll be perfect on stage. <laughs> How can you not be talented? You're wearing a hat. <laughs> Dion Lawmore, 333 Park Avenue. And is her homework tough? Sick burn? <laughs> the audition consists of lines of women showing off their legs. If they've got good legs, they're in the show. Then later on, we find out if they can sing and dance. They only cast 39 girls. They need 40. Well, that's great. That's it, my nervous breakdown. I know a swell dame. She's dynamite. She's pretty enough. May as well give her a try. So all they had to do to get into a Broadway show back then was to have there being some sort of counting error. <laughs> Marsh gives a rousing speech. We got five weeks. Don't suck. Listen, sister. I'll show you those taps. Come on with me. I'm here to tap that ass. That's a theatrical expression. It means tap dance. And it happens in my office. Say, I can do a tap dance on my ear. Which is the problem. We get to see some rehearsals for a song called It Must Be June. Where you sitting? Where you sitting? On a flagpole, Mary, on a flagpole. Hmm. <laughs> it's out! Yeah, it's a really boring song. <laughs> you mean you don't like this number? Sure I like it. I've liked it since 1905. Ever since the mutiny on the battleship Potemkin, I've liked this song. We meet Pat Denning, and Dorothy Brock is having a little thing with him on the side. Boy, if Abner finds out about that, he'll pull his funding, and the show will not happen. Well, dear, it's just that I'm getting tired of this hiding in doorways and sneaking in and out of places. The leading man for this picture has got to be bland. Yep. I want the blandest man in town. Get me Brent. The producers call some thugs, send Pat Denning a message to stay away from Dorothy Brock. Oh, getting a sudden attack of manhood, possibly. Ah, oh, Dad, let's quit kidding ourselves. Little known fact, in this scene he's actually sleep acting. <laughs> totally unconscious. Why, you trained me and coached me and taught me all I know. I was pretty dumb, too. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. Actually, I have forgotten because I'm still pretty dumb. You haven't taught me much. Bye. <laughs> George Brent, the living embodiment of skim milk. They're rehearsing night and day. Marsh is driving them to their breaking point. Faster! 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 <laughs> May I remind you that Pretty Lady's out-of-town opening is not far away? Give it something! Oh, he's losing it! He's going nutso all the way down to his butt so. Zump, 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 zump. I just come here to imagine having an erection. To act just like a drug, and to be a habit with me, laudanum. She's got a habit, and it's you. You're getting to be a habit with me. You've got me in your clutches. Free. You're getting to be a habit with me. Can't break it. Someone call the police. <laughs> The best movie <laughs> and Peggy who's kind of new to this thing just plain out faints she meets Pat Denning he takes a liking to her too remind me to tell you I think you're swell Ing, you're swelling when you fell <laughs> well I can't go home with my girlfriend because there's this fat bald old guy who wants to you know have sex with her so why don't we get dinner tonight well, what do you advise for a man who's both hungry and lonesome and who hates to eat alone company Excellent. Did you have anyone in mind in particular? Did you? <laughs> so they go out to dinner, or so we hear. What, we didn't get to see dinner? <sighs> he walks her home, and those thugs show up, and they give Denning the message with their fist. She takes Pat upstairs to cure what ails him. But the landlady finds out. What kind of a house do you think this is? House of prostitution. That's what it said on the door. Now you get out. Then if he goes, I go too. That's just fine. Hmm. Now Peggy's got no place to stay. What about my place? She does that. Just a couple of rose-colored glasses. Let's try them and see how the world looks. Yum, malt vinegar. I took the apple cider vinegar myself. <laughs> Keeps my skin nice and porous. <laughs> you should be in bed with no one. See, he's a gentleman. 
I'll go sleep in the sink. Dorothy stops by Pat's place. Do you know what's wrong with me, or rather with us? My chlamydia. It used to just be wrong with me, but now it's yeah. wrong with us. I really can't be seeing you anymore because I got this other thing going on. I love you. Me too. I love you. <laughs> me too. Rehearsals continue. Five weeks of rehearsal. <laughs> Everyone pack your bags. We're going to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, PA. Yeah, and on Sundays it's PU. Yes! Finally, we get to the last rehearsal. I just wanted someone to be gay with. Someone to be gay with? I choose Billy Eichner. <laughs> I don't like this dance. I prefer those other dances when there were a hundred people just stomping. <laughs> yes. Gandhi? <laughs> Marsh gives the cast a pep talk of sorts, kind of, not really. It's not good, it's not bad. Forget about the show for tonight. Go get drunk. Tomorrow night, we'll knock him dead. I'll see you at the hotel, room 1061. And make it snappy. <clears throat> Julian talks to Andy. Say, Marsh is a wizard. He turns them out like clockwork. The guy isn't human. He's a machine. Well, Andy, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Dorothy is leaving with Abner, but she sees Pat getting in a car with Peggy. That isn't good. You ain't gonna have another one of your spells, are you? If you're going to have one of your spells, make it cure light wounds and not lightning bolt. There's a cast party. Abner is there and he's drunk. He's doing feats of strength. He's running around and slapping asses. He and Dorothy get into a fight. She's sick of him. He's a boor. She doesn't want to kiss him or be touched by him. Oh, God! Don't anybody whose insurance ain't paid up. It's official. Great cast party. I want to see Mr. Denning. Is he here? You know he's here. While she was two-timing Abner, Pat was two-timing her, or so she thinks. And she and Peggy get in a roustabout. Dorothy falls over and breaks her ankle. <gasps> she won't be able to dance tomorrow in the big show. She's got to play tomorrow night. The only thing anyone can do is to get her a pair of crutches. Oh. All singing, all dancing, all hobbling. They need a replacement. The next day Abner shows up, he's got his new flavor of the day, and it's Anytime Annie. She's going to take the lead role in tonight's performance. I would love to play the lead in the show, but I know I'm not the right person. You know who is the right person? Peggy Sawyer. Peggy, that little nobody. She could play this role. You have till tonight to learn the show. This was the perfect opportunity for Marsh to dress in drag and play the role himself. They rehearse all day. She can't really act. So he uses the old kissing method to... And this, I think, is a very old method. She uses... He uses... So he kisses her. And the she learns how to act. That's better. Now let me hear it from the beginning. And I'll give you some more inspiration. Honk honk. <laughs> she learns all the songs. On the avenue, I'm taking you to Forty Second Street. Faster. She learns all the dances. <laughs> <laughs> She's off chatting with Billy. Well, honey, you're gonna be a terrific kid. You'll probably fail spectacularly. He tells her he loves her, kind of. I always thought you're swell or some line like that. And I'm for you too, you know that. Such passionate words. I'm for you. <laughs> Second Street. The opening night curtain draws near, and Peggy gets a visit from Dorothy. She comes hobbling in on her broken ankle. I challenge you to a crutch fight. <laughs> she gives Peggy her blessing. I might be washed up in this business. I guess this is how it happens. I broke my leg and got drunk. And, and not in that order. That's the confidence that Peggy needs. You're going out a youngster, but you've got to come back a star. The curtain goes up. And we shuffle off to Buffalo. These two are just married, and this man has a shameful secret. I'll go home and pack my panties. You go home and get your scanties. She's just discovered something about her new husband. Yes. Or not shameful. Hey, you be you. Shuffle off to Buffalo. And did you just tell me that you wear panties? Shuffle off, shuffle off, shuffle off. That mortal coil. Oh no, we got on the wrong train. We're shuffling off to Syracuse. After all the shuffling is done, Billy Lawler comes out and he sings a little song about how young and healthy he is. I'm young and healthy. 
Very few of them have rickets. <laughs> She's being felt up by a yeti. I'm young and healthy. <coughs> Blood! <laughs> Complicated dance maneuvers. Looks like a bowl full of snacks. Oh, wow. Oh, hey, this isn't where we wanted to end. And finally, we get the title song, 42nd Street. On the avenue, I'm taking you to 42nd Street. Little 50s from the 50s. You know, women. <laughs> 40s, 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 42nd Street. Come and score some heroin. <laughs> we see what life is like on 42nd Street. We see people... She's... The street vendors, there's kids, there's dwarfs. Whoa, I'm not smoking anymore. I am a robot, Norman. <laughs> there's a woman being shot at. She jumps to safety. Then she gets stabbed on the back by the attempted murderer who's become a successful murderer. Lots of these things happen on 42nd Street. Remember me? I got married to someone earlier in the movie, but now I'm with him. Because this play makes no sense. Brought to you by Asbestos. You'll no longer be young and healthy when you hang out with Asbestos. <laughs> the show is a hit. Everyone walks out, they're talking about it. That new girl, she's a natural star. This Marsh guy seems to be kind of washed up. And that's all Marsh gets for his efforts. That and an ulcer. <laughs> We have shuffled all the way to Buffalo and back with 42nd Street. An avenue I'm taking you to. 42nd Street. Oh, yeah. Just realized that today. I don't know where the nomenclatures come from, but a street and an avenue are different. Boy, Speed Levitch would have a field day with that line. <laughs> Could you follow that? You didn't need to. The key to the success of this movie is anticipation. You're waiting for this big show. By the time you get to the big show, it's so great that you forget about the crappy movie that you just watched. And we are here for those three dance numbers at the end. Yeah. They're all amazing. Hollywood just did not get leading men right until the mid-30s. <laughs> until so. Clark Gable came along. Yeah. You know, when John Wayne started to sort of mm -hmm. come into his own. And even they figured out how to get normal looking guys who were handsome, like Jimmy Stewart. People with interesting faces and mm -hmm. people with different voices and they're not just these fellows. George Brent seems almost incapable of facial expressions. Yes. Did you ever see the movie Ziegfeld Follies? No. That movie improves on this movie in that there's no plot. Mm -hmm. It's just number, 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 number. And sometimes we see Flo Ziegfeld in heaven remembering his career. <laughs> But they know what we're there for. Yeah. You know, instead of these three great numbers at the end, they're going to give us a dozen numbers throughout the whole show. Yeah, I don't think that's uncommon. I think Stormy Weather was that way and Hell's a Poppin'. And just like, we're just going to put on a variety show in movie form. Yeah. Which will be grander than any theater or television thing you could ever imagine. And talking about something grander than anything theater could put on, the 42nd Street number just gives up on the ruse that you're watching a stage play. It's just absolutely impossible, and you're like, yes, give it to me. And then it flips back into being a play when everyone starts progressing up the stairs and they become the city. Oh, that's a play. The story in this is definitely lacking. The acting, for the most part, is kind of lacking. Ruby Keeler is cute as a button, but mm -hmm. she's not a very good actress. No. What bothers me is that routine. However, it does have Warner Baxter. It does. He's an actor that really sells desperation. He is not just working at a different level. He seems to be in a different movie. Everyone, you're doing a comedy, but I'm doing a very sincere drama. There are things on the line. His health, his life, his sanity, his career. All his effort to create the successful show, it doesn't make him happy. He's a doomed man, essentially. Mm -hmm. Get the house doctor right away, right. will you? The house doctor. Yeah, and hotels, they used to have those. I know. Yeah, and detectives. Every hotel had a doctor. Just yeah, hanging every around. decent hotel, I guess. You sent for me? Yes, doctor, right in there. He's just on Dr. duty 24 hours a day. Yeah. And how about those legs? It seems as though someone had a certain fetish for legs. <laughs> how do you mount a Broadway musical? Gams and nothing but. We have met those dancing feet while we watched 42nd Street. And now the avenue we're taking you to is Seen It. See it. Spencer Riley writes, I hope you get the chance to see Mary Poppins Returns. I had a big dopey grin on my face the whole time. Seen it. Seen it. We with saw it. With, e with each other. We saw it together in the theater on New Year's Day. And if we hadn't seen it that day, 
We wouldn't be talking about it on Cena because I would not have seen the movie without an invitation. You watched it under protest, definitely. Yes. You were a little grumpy about it afterwards, I, I felt. I didn't like it. I can't remember a single song from the movie. The songs are very forgettable. Yeah. I didn't like the fact that it seemed to be grounded in reality for certain scenes. Oh, I just... He, my wife is dead. lost his wife. I don't want that in a movie. They may as well have had it taken place five or ten years later. How are we going to survive the Blitz? I didn't really have those issues. I found the movie to be a good movie for kids. Mm -hmm. It's sincere, it's sweet, and it's free of irony. That oh, was that's, the thing that's that good. I liked the most yes. about it. I didn't like the fact that it tried to be an exact analog to the original. Because I really thought they did not need that Meryl Streep scene. But I that was at least a fun sequence, you know? Well, it was fun crazy. And you had someone who was kind of acting up and down to the material at the same time. If they had gotten rid of that scene, you'd have cut a good 15 minutes off of a movie that's already too long. Yes, but uh, the original Mary Poppins was too long, too. And the production numbers were really neat, the dances and stuff. Yeah. Every single time there was something I liked about it, and I would think, this is what I like about the movie, they would change it. The uh, lamplighters were anonymous. They were kind of faceless men in the shadows, just as the chimney sweeps were in the original one. Then someone steps into the light, and he has a, like a little solo thing, and I'm like, why is he here? He's not anonymous like they were for the first 25 minutes of the scene. Oh, and the big cameo at the bank at the end. Yeah, he know. also, like Meryl Streep, just came and delivered. And delivered, dancing as a very old man. All right. Fan of musicals. Welcome. Writes, thoughts on Jesus Christ Superstar Live? I loved it more than I thought I would. Some great casting and interesting staging choices. The ending was especially beautiful. Seen it, and yes, that ending was like, oh, this is what it feels like to be Christian. I think this is the E in Mr. Legend's EGOT. It has brought something into my personal brain vernacular, which is breakdancing Judas. <laughs> I don't know. I just love Jesus Christ Superstar. It got me into theater. It got me into musicals. It got me into rock and roll, practically. Pizza Goblin writes, they did a Tim Burton scene it with no Sweeney Todd? Seen it. Seen it. You're the biggest Stephen Sondheim fan I know. How did the movie do for you? <sighs> it was okay. The play is a very dark comedy. Very dark. Like, yeah. as dark as you can get. But there's still comedy there, and Depp was playing it too dour, and Tim Burton, who can do very dark comedy, seemed to just do dark for too much of it. Okay. It just bums me out. Now, I'm never going to go back to Sweeney Todd. You're not? <laughs> yeah. K.J. Mathias asks... Gold Diggers of 1933? Seen it in the theater. We saw it together at the mm -hmm. Cinematheque. I have to say, I think it was one of the great theater-going experiences of my adult life. Yes. Because we were all in that theater, 100, 120 people, mm -hmm. of all ages, and we were all laughing. Yeah. We were all happy. Mm -hmm. You could feel that in the room. It really makes a case for continuing to go out and see movies in a theater. You care about the plot in it. It's got the snappiest dialogue ever. You can tell the characters apart. And in terms of pre-code, this one is worlds apart from 42nd Street. Mm -hmm. It is racy. There are marijuana jokes. <laughs> There's side boob. There's Billy Barty playing a mischievous baby. And you think while you're watching it, that baby's a really good actor. <laughs> there is nipple silhouettes. There's nudity, yes. Yes. And it, it is so exciting to see. Oh, you know, when we watch Game of Thrones. We're jaded when it comes to breast. And then you see that and you're like, whoa! <laughs> There's a little something that could get to be a habit with you, and that's going to our website, welcometothebasementshow.com. All of our episodes are there. Every single one of them. A hundred and... Seventy or so. Yeah. And there's PayPal donation buttons. You can click on them to support this show with a one-time or rolling monthly donation. Really? We sure would appreciate it. And I, I think somebody did. Alessio, who says, please say something to Eliza from Italy, who's been following you for years and is finally getting her degree in law some two weeks ago. I guess she would appreciate an insult... Directly from your heart. Uh, well, we don't really do insults on this show. That's more of a beer and more games thing, but... Congratulations, Eliza, you slowpoke. <laughs> Took you all those years to become a lawyer. I hope this isn't too offensive, but thanks. You're, uh, you're Italian, so yeah. you, you can do that. To find out who the rest of our donors are and to see the contents of our mail crate, you can watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. It's time for us to lower the curtain here on Welcome to the Basement, but before that happens, you can watch this. Hey, knock it off. <clears throat> You're distracting me. Tona, I need you to come get this cat. 
Jones and Barry are doing a show.